Greetings, programs. This is Wretch. Welcome back to Supposedly Wonderful Future. And now it's time to contact the suspects, guys. We've got video feeds to all five of Ashley's friends, and we're just going to go down the line one by one and see if maybe we can find some more clues as to who actually did this to her. Here you can initiate a video conversation with those who could be responsible for the incident. Call suspect A, B, C, D, or E. Well, we'll start with suspect A. Establishing connection. Success! The call is answered by a tall man wearing pajamas and holding an open book in his hand. He is visibly irritated. Yes, what do you want? Am I interrupting? Of course you are. What, you think I just sit on my butt here doing nothing? I'm in no habit to waste time. If you're talking to me, you're interrupting me. Oh, this is the uh, thespian. I just need to ask you a few questions. Wait, you the core guy, corp guy I was warned about? Looking into that thing that happened to Ashley? Fine, I'll spare you some time. If you want to know something, ask. I've got nothing to hide. Tell me about your relationship with Ashley. There isn't much to tell. We work together. She's competent, helpful, never creates unnecessary problems. And I respect that. Hmm. Would you call it competitive? Were you dissatisfied that she was a lead actor and you weren't? Oh, please. An actor doesn't need to spend more time on screen than others in order to truly shine. I mean, Ash is a nice kid with believable portrayal of emotions, but she and I are still on different levels, and anyone with half a brain could see it. Our average viewer doesn't satisfy that requirement, of course, but there's nothing I can do about it. Do you think that Ashley's friendly personality made her opinion carry more weight? Was your advice ever ignored in favor of Ashley's? My advice ignored? Nonsense. My recommendations are carried out to the letter. When we're talking about work, the team knows who to listen. As for the general chit-chat, Ashley can have all the attention she wants. I have no interest in mundane things, and I clearly separate between the two. Okay. Do you know why you're under suspicion? Because you have no idea where to start, so you're just suspecting everyone Ashley knows? No. It's because you had access to Ashley's account and could post her fake, re fake resignation at your leisure. Just because I could doesn't mean I did. I had absolutely no reason to do this strange and useless thing. It's easy, it's final, there's nothing more to it, and I hope you stop right there and save us both a lot of time. I mean, you probably won't, but I still hope. What's your role in the team? Simple. I do all the good parts. The good parts being... Acting, writing, giving precious advice. Whenever you see things turning from good to special, that's where I was involved. It's a time-consuming process, and sometimes I have no choice but to leave entire episodes to others, but I work hard to ensure that the series as a whole remains just special enough. I used to know people just like this when I was in college for a theater. And I assume the rest of the team is just along for the ride? Hey, even a genius needs others to help with the routine. They're good folks, hard-working, with their hearts in the right place. You can't blame them for not having the spark. That's the kind of thing you need to be born with. How nice of you. What can I say? I'm an artist. <laughs> we could just... I, I do want to say that, but... Alright, we're gonna go ahead and change the topic. What do you think about the incident? I think this entire incident would be non-existent if Ash could only listen to me for a change. I mean, yeah, that fake I'm leaving thing wasn't particularly pleasant, even if it was easy to fix. But the rest of it? So what if some whiny fans choose this particular time to be dissatisfied? If only she could accept viewers for what they really are, the problem would go away instantly. And what are viewers, really? Morons.
You don't say. But I do say that. Over and over again. To everyone who appears to have ears. Yet they all stubbornly ignore the simple fact. So you think people can't understand your show anyway? Most people can't understand anything sufficiently complex. That's just something you have to accept when you're in the business of making real art. But viewers are the whole reason to do it for Ashley. I know, she draws motivation from it, and that's fine. Nobody says she should disregard them completely. But to create something like this and expect the masses to truly appreciate it? That's just unrealistic. If people will never appreciate your work, why bother? I said they don't appreciate it now. I didn't say they never will. True artists think ahead of their time, so it takes some generations to catch up. But one day, people of the future will understand our masterpiece in all its glory. Ahead of your time? Really? Naturally. Was Franz Kafka appreciated during his lifetime? Vincent van Gogh? What about Melville's Moby Dick or Bulgakov's Master and Margarita? Chew art never attracts armies of admirers right upon release. Okay, change of topic. Why did you choose this line of work anyway? It's the only thing worth doing. The only way to truly leave your mark on the world. And I assume any other profession is not worth doing and has no way to leave a mark. Oh, don't take it the wrong way. I have nothing against people who choose different paths. If nothing else, I pity them. One day they will all disappear and their existence erased and forgotten. Me? My legacy will live in eternity. Isn't that a bit of a stretch? It's not. It is, in fact, the whole point. Is that your way to become immortal, then? Because I think the world of science has already solved that problem conventionally. True immortality is not about extra years. It's about how you spend them. If people can waste dozens of years on nothing, they can waste hundreds just as easily. Most will continue to do so. So will discovery change nothing. You're kind of delusional. There's going to be a time when all of humanity is gone and forgotten, let alone specific individuals. Not if we transcend the time first. And how exactly are you planning to do that, O oh Transcendent One? Have some faith, my little fatalistic friend. Better yet, just wait and see. I think you're guilty and I can tell you why. Okay, let's not jump the gun here. That's all for now. Well, that was thoroughly unpleasant. Do 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 do. Let's go ahead and call Suspect B now. Now, let me look at my list here. Who was who in the great... Uh... Okay, B is Chloe, if I recall correctly. Is he Chloe or Vivian? And Daniel is number C. That's going to be the, the tough one. The call takes probably a full minute to connect. Whoever's on the other side, they sure took their sweet time. When the feed from camera finally kicks in, you see that someone turned their living room into a middle school science fair. Tubes, wooden contraptions, and interactive bottles of every kind are filling the place. In front, a young woman is standing and looking at you, most of her features obscured by her weird appearance. She wears an old discolored lab coat, a shirt unbuttoned at the top, and a pair of massive, opaque goggles. Her hair is unruly and dyed gray. The ridiculous outfit feels tantalizingly familiar, but then the woman opens her mouth and everything falls into place. Is it Christopher Lloyd? <laughs> okay. I can't, I don't want to do the, uh, I can't do a female Christopher Lloyd. That's weird. <laughs> Great Scott Marty, you startled me. Uh, my name's Michael, not Marty. I'm calling on behalf of Life Plus. You are? Oh, well, I'm going to call you Marty anyway. It'd be preferable not to disrupt my concentration with unrelated data. Do you require my assistance? Yes, I'm investigating the incident with Ashley, and I need you to answer my questions, if that is even possible with the way you speak. 
Of course it's possible, Marty. If you put your mind to it, you can accomplish anything. Oh, worry not. I have received the information pertaining to the incident via digital messaging system, and I'm ready to follow its explicit instructions. Fire away. Do you know why you're under suspicion? Uh, it appears that I unintentionally gained access to a sensitive and normally restricted piece of information, which gave me theoretical means to compromise Ashley's emotional well-being and become the catalyst for the transpired events. That's one way to describe it, yes. I believe the digital mes messaging system referred to it as knowing her password. Uh, please excuse the crudity of my language. I'm still trying to fully grasp the technology of this time. It's quite different from my permanent residence in the Old West. Ah, okay, so this is after three. But he still has his uh, train. Well, did you become the catalyst? Of course not, Marty. Why would I do such a thing? Ashley was, and I hope still is, the key player of the project I choose to participate in. I had no intention to compromise its success. Well, tell me about your relationship with Ashley. Uh, as you know, Marty, my involvement in any social relationship here in 2048 could result in the disruption of the space-time continuum. As a scientist, I try not to take that risk. Having said that, she's a wonderful friend, and I enjoy working with her immensely. Do you have any kind of professional rivalry? No, that would only distract from success successfully achieving our common goals. I have no interest in any kind of imaginary competitions. Still, she was such a fan favorite up until recently. It must be annoying when your co-lead takes all the attention away. Well, I, I suppose I do experience such emotions from time to time, if I'm being completely honest. I spend days and nights perfecting my performance, yet her sole natural charm attracts an army of admirers so big they could probably produce 1.21 gigawatts all by themselves. My calculations just don't seem to be correct this time. Go on. Uh, I'm not going to hide it, Marty. This is a demanding endeavor. It was essentially to my plan that I traveled to 2048 alone, but it's also made things more taxing. I miss my dear Clara and our rhythmic ceremonial rituals under the stars. Whoa. I, I miss my boys. I miss the good social standing I established as a blacksmith of Hill Valley back in the 1880s. Were these feelings strong enough to want her out of the picture? No, Marty, I would never choose such an irresponsible course of action. Uh, we may stumble, we may experience illogical emotions, but in the end, a scientist should welcome challenges. It's all part of the package. The pitfalls and the possibilities, the perils and the promise, perhaps there's even an answer looking around a corner. An answer to that universal question, why? I, I have another question. What's your role in the team? Oh, I, I act, Marty. Betray actions and emotions of a fictional human being while others film it on camera. And the episodic play I participate in becomes instantaneously available to everyone on Earth the moment it's been completed. Can you imagine that? What about the others? Capable performers who contribute to the project's success. All of them. I especially like Anne's work. She always builds her models to scale and paints them. I never thought you'd be interested in acting, Doc. Oh, you know me, Marty. I'm interested in anything that helps us gain a clearer perception of humanity. Ronald Reagan was once an actor too, right? What do you think about the incident? It's an unfortunate happenstance, uh, but I'm sure Ashley will turn out fine. Hmm. Well, at least somebody agree. Oh, well. That's it? Aren't you worried about her? She took it pretty hard. Uh, no, 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 I, I didn't mean it that way. Uh, what's happened is an awful, 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 awful mess. I simply have faith she'll manage to get through it, emerging stronger and more experienced than ever before. We all have to make decisions that affect the course of our lives, and those decisions cannot be imposed. Hmm. That's a pretty positive way to look at things. Uh, don't get me wrong, Marty. I fully approve of your efforts to uncover the truth. The search for knowledge is the most commendable activity in the universe. But the unpleasant fact is that the damage is already done. Ashley is at the temporal junction point, and she'll need to make a good future for herself. Unless you want to travel back in time and prevent the incident from happening, which, I suppose, can be arranged. Hmm...
Let's see. She doesn't want to make anything new. She wants her old life back. Nobody says she has to leave our project, Marty. I, for one, would be thrilled if she chooses to continue on her current path, despite the derision of bystanders. True scientists never abandon their commitments. And what do you think about Daniel? Well, he, he, he's a nice enough kid. Rarely assist in my experiments, but we tend to share conversations either way. He once revealed to me that he's amorously infatuated with Ashley and sought advice on successful mating. I recommended Florence Nightingale effect. It, you what? No, uh, don't worry, Marty. I, I don't think he understand what I meant. The boy might have a few short circuits in his bionic implants. That seems to happen in this 2048 despite the absence of bionic implants. Hey, Doc? What is it, Marty? Oh, Lord, we got back to the future questions? Okay. You didn't sell the flux capacitor technology to a company named Life Plus, did you? Sell? I impossible. I didn't invent the time machine for financial gain. Need I remind you how dangerous it can be in the wrong hands? No, I, I, I think we both know that too well at this point. Precisely. So, how are things with the family? All is well, Marty. Uh, Clara and I enjoy a peaceful marriage, and our boys are growing up as insatiably curious as I was at their age. I'm away quite frequently, but they never get lonely, because I can return right when I left. The way I see it, if you're going to take a lot of business trips, why not do it in time? Do you like this 2048? It's satisfactory enough, I suppose. True, we haven't achieved all of our dreams, but at least it's not as dusty as in 1885. Also, less hanging. I'm still trying to figure out this whole online world thing. You and everybody else, Doc. Another great mystery of the universe, then. Challenge accepted. You know the irony of this? I'm a real time traveler, but I pretend that I'm not so I can talk with somebody pretending to be a time traveler. Great Scott, Marty! The overlapping layers of this particular temporal scheme are starting to challenge my thinking cap capabilities. I think I might need to hit my head on the sink one more time to understand it. And let's change the topic. Oh, you're the doc, Marty? Wait, no, wait. I I'm the doc. And I'll be back. Yowza. Now comes the in now comes the important part. Let's go ahead and chat chat with Daniel, our prime suspect. You see a man standing in the middle of a bedroom. He looks a bit confused. And wearing a baseball cap. Hello? Is that Daniel? Yes. Who am I talking to? Hello, Daniel. My name is Michael. I'm a representative of Life Plus, and I work to resolve the incident that's happened to Ashley. Oh, crap. It, it wasn't me, man. I haven't done anything. Relax, kid. I'm not your enemy. I'm here to figure out the truth. Nothing more. Really? Oh, that's great. I worked myself up when I got that scary message, to be honest. Didn't even hope a big shot like you could actually be nice. Not much faith in your friendly corporate overlords? <laughs> uh, no, I, I have faith in corporate overlords, just not in their friendliness. Actually, if you don't mind me asking, what's it like to work at a high position for such a huge company? I've always wanted to get a job at some big corp. Yeah, you're mistaking me for someone else, kid. I'm not even officially employed. You're still important enough to lead this investigation, so you must much have a, must have a much better idea than me. So, what's it like? I'm asking the questions here. Hmm. Well, let's be honest here. Not much different from anywhere else, I guess. Just people trying to do their jobs. Some hate it. Some marry it. Some try to find balance as best they can. Really? That's quite different from how I imagined, but thanks for telling me. And hey, just shoot me any questions you want. Good, we have broken the ice. 
Do you know why you're under suspicion? Of course I do. It's because I managed to screw up right before this thing happened. Asked her to be my girlfriend, got rejected, couldn't deal with it properly. So now you think I hired hackers and wrote that post to get back at her, or asked a hacker friend, or even hacked it myself, as if I know how to do that. Why would you need to hack it? Uh, but why wouldn't I? How else can you write something under someone else's name? Oh, I don't know. Maybe knowing the account's password helps? Password? Well, yeah, actually, she told me her password so I could quickly try out that library of sense, but what does this have to do with anything? One's password gives access to one's account. One's account is used to write posts in one's blog. It's pretty simple, isn't it? Sure, but how... Wait, you mean I could have used the same password and went to her blog instead of the library? Oh. Hmm. You're as clueless in cybersecurity matters as Ashley, aren't you? A Ashley? Clueless? If, if you call Ashley clueless, I wonder what that makes me. Yeah, I don't think the right word has been invented yet. Thanks for saying that out loud, mister. Go ahead and tell me about your relationship with Ashley. Do, do you really need to ask that? Your friend said that my screw up was recorded and is now available for everyone to watch. And it's not like they had to mention that. Pretty much everything is monitored by cameras these days. Well, just go ahead and tell me your version. I don't have a version, nor do I have any excuses. What you saw is what happened. Ashley and I were friends, well... Maybe that's because she's so nice to everyone that you just feel like being her friend, but then I pushed too far too fast. Boyd asked me to do the special effects for the rest of the season, and it's a big pain in the ass, but it also meant I got to work closely with her, so I grabbed the opportunity. She showed me the basics on that meetup day. We were alone, shared some nice moments, had a good laugh, so I thought, this is it, now or never, I need to make a move. How long have you been romantically interested in her? Pretty much since we first met. I fell for her the moment I joined this team, and I've stayed this long only because of that. Which wasn't very long, to be fair. But still enough time to get serious, or at least not flat out reject me the moment I opened my mouth. It's, it's just not fair. So you decided to keep insisting until it turned into harassment? Yes. Only I never thought about the harassment part. Look, I, I am an idiot, all right? Being an idiot is not a crime. It's not an excuse either. But I tried to apologize. The, the very same evening, I returned and said that I'm sorry. And how did that work out for you? It worked well. At least I thought it did. And then this weird incident happened and we haven't talked since and... Oh, I'm screwed. Even if you don't arrest me, I'm never going to see my beautiful Ashley again. Whoa, that was a little creepy. And what's your role on the team? Just little things here and there, really. This is more of a transitional phase for me. I want to find a real job. And what qualifies as a real job? Something more substantial? With salary, benefits, career opportunities? If you're so uncommitted, then why stay on the team at all? Isn't it obvious? Because I like Ashley, and this was the easiest way to get closer. Much good it did me in the end. So, you weren't taking things very seriously? No, I suppose I wasn't. Did it ever cause friction between you and the other team members? Occasionally, yes. It's not like I don't understand them. It's frustrating when others are ambivalent about something you treasure a lot, but I also can't force myself to care. Did it ever cause friction between you and Ashley? 
Yes, though, she was always very polite about it. Why? Just trying to understand your relationship better. Okay. So you wanted a boring job. Real jobs aren't supposed to be fun. But they're supposed to bring you money so you can have fun when you're not working. Fair enough. And what do you think about the incident? It's weird. Why would anyone do this? You tell me. Please, I, I don't know about this any more than you do. Actually, I know much less. Aren't you a little bit worried about Ashley? Of course I am. Did she... Did she really consider suicide? No. Still, she was shaken to the core. But, but why? Ashley is so skillful. I'm sure she could find another job in no time. Hmm. Is that all you think about? Jobs? She found more than a job here. She found people who care about her efforts. People wanted her gone in the end. See, that's another thing I don't understand. Either viewers like you, or either viewers like you, or they don't. How can a single mistake tip the scale so seriously and suddenly? Hmm. Maybe it was the last straw. Still, it was the false last straw. So the imposter, or the imposter is responsible for the whole thing. Man, it's complicated. I hope she'll be okay. Let's take a break there. Hmm. And how many? We got two more after Daniel, is that correct? Yeah, D and E. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, guys. I think this is... Let's go ahead and chat. See if there's anything more that we can get from... Uh, oh, nope. We cannot talk to Ashley. All we can do is get a warrant now at this rate. All right, so we'll go ahead and end the episode here. And when we get back, we'll question the final two suspects. And I guess go ahead and send uh, Sam Spade to do some warrants and see where the story goes from here. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you liked the video, please leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, that'd be a big help. And we'll see you next time. Later days, everyone.